Hey, Adam Colbertson here. Before we begin, we got a promo from another independent podcast, so when you finish this episode, make sure you go and check them out. Hey, podcast lovers. Are you looking for a story with drama? Please help me. Action. If Skylar becomes a problem, I'll handle them. Mystery. Who are you? Humor. If you put too many eggs in a basket, one of them's gonna drop out and split right open. Have I got a story for you. Stick Shift Incorporated, an audio drama about life, death, and mayhem. Available wherever podcasts are found. Steal your mind for eldritch horrors of the universe unknown. For what is to follow is a tale of intrigue, mystery, and madness. You're listening to microphones and monsters. Your three days are up. You're all three together now. Um, you're at the you're at the DDA. Um, where do y'all want to start together? We're we're done. Now. Like you've already woken up. You've eaten breakfast. Like you're ready to to start your day and and look into something. Well, I think that um, uh, since Victor was sort of still kind of. Uh, low key investigating that Victor would start to tell them what's going on uh, based on the memories that he got. Especially, he yeah. would want to make sure that Julian knew that the sample that he took was fruitful. So, yeah, uh, I'll go ahead. And- well, where, what room are, are y'all in? The, the- that's, I was going to say, yeah, if I'll I'm just, at yeah, the I'll DDA, just be at my be desk, just kind of pouring over some stuff. Okay. Yeah. So you're in the office, begin. Uh, Go ahead and start, Victor. All right. Hey, uh, Julian Alistair, um, I wanted to go over some of the stuff that I uh, was able to find out uh, the last couple of days with uh, the samples uh, that, that we had from Matthias and, and Julian. I was able to, uh, to pick up on some specific memories that might be useful. Uh, you guys have time Nihilus, to... you mean? Vic- Victor, I'm right here. What? You... You said Matthias and Julian. Uh, Matthias oh. and Nihilus. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. I'm still a little thrown off by all the memories. Um, yeah. But um, I discovered that uh, that there was uh, Matthias got the violin from from a person wearing a a, a, a hooded yellow robe. Um, they they gave it to him just like you know, in the alley where he was, you know, living on the street. And, uh, and when he played the violin, it made him, it made him feel like really, really good. And so, so I think that's why I was able to influence him so much. Um, Could you tell if it was the same exact person as the, the, um, the one we met in the, uh, in the mansion? It, it, it wasn't, it was, it was different. The, the, the robe was very nice looking. It wasn't, it wasn't tattered or anything like that. I still couldn't make out a face, but, but it was, it, it definitely wasn't that guy or, or whatever he was. Um, but I do remember it was very nice and it was very distinctly yellow. So the, the color yellow seems to be popping up a lot. Um, think it, I think it may have something to do with, uh, with, uh, council member, uh, Renfield. Um, uh, 
because one of the other memories that I got from Julian, from not from Julian. I'm right here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the sample, the sample that you let me have of Nihilus Creel. Um, uh, Nihilus witnessed a meeting between, between Astra Creel and the sheriff, um, where they were talking about how all, all the, all that sabotage and, 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 goings on <laughs> um uh they were both very confident that it had something to do with renfield um and so i think i think that's i think i think these events might might be tied together through him what what are your thoughts on on that well um there's little coincidence that the man that we encountered in the mansion with the hound and your visions and what we've already seen from Renfield that all three of those people just happening to wear the same kind of yellow can't be coincidence. Um, I think we need a little more to go on with that uh, for anything to stick. So, um, <clears throat> I think we need to, I think we need to do a little more digging before we can start pointing fingers or swords for that matter. No, I, I agree. I just, like you said, that was a big coincidence. I thought mm -hmm. it seemed, it seemed too, it doesn't seem like it means nothing. Alistair, you've been gone for, um, uh, large, um, well, actually, I've been gone for large periods of time. Um, have you been able to find any uh, anything unusual going on in the dreamlands? Um, well, I suppose that depends on what you mean by unusual. Uh, it usually means the, I don't know what it is. <laughs> the cats of Orthwar seem to have uh, decided they don't want to share any information and are actively avoiding me, it seems. Uh, they don't seem to be around very much, and when I do see one, they kind of scamper off very quickly. Have you become some sort of pariah in the dreamlands as of late? Uh, would that I could. Uh, personally, I would prefer not to associate them with, like, uh, with them if I could help it. But, uh, unfortunately, they have information that I well, they would didn't have very a much like to find out. with this before. What changed? Well, I have my suspicion, but at the same time, uh, I don't know if I can really confirm it just yet. They don't like the color green. <laughs> that, that has to be it. It's all down to colors at this point. We'll just switch it off and then they'll come, come running. <laughs> yes, but they should accept me I as I am. I think that's how we should treat all people. Well... Let's yeah, not, let's not get crazy <laughs> now. Shall okay, we? so the only thing that I have as a loose end is um, before our first meetings with the uh, cats at Uthwar, there was an explosion at the factory, very akin to um, some of the sabotage um, that's been rumored about going on. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do any more investigation as I was trying to find where you guys went and we know how that all ended up. I think that's another loose end that uh, warrants us revisiting. No, I, I agree. Do do we know if there's anyone at the factory now? Is it still shut down? I, I've been cooped up in the office for several days, so we'd have to actually leave the office, which is a, a terrifying concept now considering uh, recent events. Haha, <laughs> COVID <laughs> plug. Um, <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I think we could uh we could do with some uh some field work right now to uh see if we can find some information. The only thing that I could think of is if we can't find any information now, we'll have to wait till the next sabotage incident happens. All right. So um y'all are y'all are getting your stuff together and and uh heading towards the elevator. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um you gotta get my so, shurikens. Yes. So yeah, you you get in the elevator. Manrose is in there, of course. He's always in there. 
Yeah, he lives. Uh, yeah, he lives there. I don't. I'm, that was internal. I'm not saying that out loud. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to get the voice. Man, Rose. Every time he goes into the elevator, for oh, the of course record. he does. Oh, hey, Victor. You having a good day? Ah, oh, as good as any. It, it has its ups and downs. They give you like a a radio or you something really like to listen that to, joke, don't you? I no, I I just kind of get lost in thought. I'm just going to like not look directly at Manrose, just kind of look off into the corner and just kind of like look in the corner of my eye and just kind of like be bitter about the fact that no one believes the fact that I know he doesn't leave that <laughs> elevator. <laughs> okay. Hello? Where? Oh, can you take us down to the uh to the to the ground floor? We're we're going to head out for today. Of course. Thank you. Uh main main floor. All right. Bye, Main Rose. Have a good day. So, um, as you're as you're walking towards the the front door, um, it it opens and you see, uh, Versbar, Doctor Arabiania, uh, come in, and she's like, "Oh, hey, hey, Julian, I, you're just the person I was uh, looking for." Good morning, Doctor. What can I help you with? Ah, uh, yes. Uh well, it seems that uh. Gerbo has gone missing. Excuse what? me? Gerbo. Um, yeah. Last time I saw him, he came up to the sanitarium bringing that, uh, that, uh, that poor, uh, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Bowman. Uh, the bugbear. Palmer. Pal- Mrs., Mrs. Palmer. Yes. <laughs> Can't. Uh, and we had a discussion about uh, the the lack of supplies up at the sanitarium as well as the clinic, and I had remembered there was a cache of supplies stored at the the hospital up in the Rose Throne Borough. Um, since it had been shut down, uh, they have a lot of supplies that that we could use up there, and uh, he said he was going to go there. Uh, what was it now? Uh, five days ago? And you'd let him go alone? You know, people are disappearing, right? Well, he... We all travel alone. I came here alone. Yes, but there's a distinct difference between you and Gerbo. Gerbo... God damn it. We have Uh, to go check on him. uh, Yeah, of course. Just processing this situation. Um... Where exactly is the where exactly is the, 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 the hospital in question in Rosestone? If you cross the bridge on Federal Street, you can uh you would find it on on the outskirts of town up up north. Okay, thank you. Um <clears throat> Alistair and Victor. Um well I understand that we had a um <clears throat> some loose ends to tie up. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this. I would uh, more than welcome your assistance in this. Oh, I, I'm coming. I, if something happened to Gerbo, I, I, I would don't know what I would do. Well, I was about to. I right. just left the clinic, and uh, I was about to head over to his house. Um, was there anything it is on the way. The if, if you, what now? Was there anything unusual at the clinic? Uh, it is. It's not open. Um, it doesn't look like anybody's been there in in a few days. No forced entry or anything like that. No, I mean I I let myself in, but uh, there wasn't. I didn't find any signs of of trouble there. Uh, just uh, other than just the lack of Gerbo. Uh, his house is on the way to uh, the hospital. Um, I was about to head there myself, but. I figured I'd stop by here since it's not too far away from the clinic uh, to see if I could catch you uh, before you uh, left for the day. I'm glad that you did. Um, well, yes, of course, I think we should all um, head over to um, his humble abode and see if there's any clues as to where or what happened in regards to his disappearance. Yeah, definitely. Yes, but um, what is in it for me? I'm sorry, exactly. did, the, did the cat... Say something? Yeah, Alistair's not thrilled that we're changing our plans. Al- Alistair 
if if Gerbo's in trouble, I think that that we owe it to him to to at least check and try to help find him. He's he's helped us several times already in the in just the last week or two. He's been more than a helpful assistant. Um, s- if you need some I might incentive, be willing if, uh, Alistar, hmm? if you assist me and Victor with this and verify that no harm or injury has come to Gerbo, um, we will uh, both help you... Um, Investigate the leads that you've had first. See, now is that so hard? And uh, while I'm here, I will discuss, I will try to discuss with uh, Sarah about this as well. Thank you. So, all right, we're going to, we're going to go ahead over there right now. Yeah. Oh, she gives you a, uh, a piece of paper with his address on it. Mm, Yeah, that would help. Yeah. Uh, So you go to his house, the door's locked. Um, but it doesn't look like there's any any forced entry at the at the front of the house. If y'all wanted to look around, uh, you don't notice any uh, forced entry. All the windows are closed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open that door up. I think I have a set of thieves' tools on me. Let me check real fast. Yeah, you did. You did. You've picked locks before. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead mm-hmm. and. Um, Roll me a uh, sleight of hand check. Uh, that would be a thief's tool check. Are you prof- oh, yeah, yeah, proficient yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. them? Um, mm, that's a very good question. Like you're, I know you're proficient in like three or four different tools as an artificer. Oh, no, I am proficient in tools. Okay, it's listed as tools, but it's listed as tools and proficient in as well. So, yeah, okay. First yeah. roll. Woo. It's Hi. an eight. <laughs> Okay. Uh it's not it's not a very complex lock and and you you hear a click. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and walk inside. You don't notice anything. It, it's an empty house. Um well, I'm not not empty. He's got furniture and, and lights on. And um uh, Yeah, you can turn the lights on. The, the lights are off. Um it's still daytime. Uh there is there is light coming in through the windows. Uh but there's a there's a cat in there. And it's um uh, it seems to be uh very scared of you, and as you're as you're looking around, you do notice that the the cat's bowl is is empty and its water bowl is empty. Um, and and Alistair, if you try to talk to her, um, she just meows back, uh, but doesn't. Um, like you, she's just scared. Poor thing. Yeah, doesn't even have its wits about it right now. Yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> definitely gonna get the cat some food and water. Uh, I'm right now, so I'm gonna look around to see what Gerbo. I'm sure Gerbo has water, but I'm gonna f- find the cat food. I'm gonna go case. I'm gonna continue to case the place and see if I can find Gerbo. Yeah, um, you don't find anything. Um, sadly, you um, as you go through, it doesn't look like like obviously like he wasn't prepared to be gone for a long amount of time. He didn't leave. Um, like he, the. The cat's hungry, like extremely hungry. Whenever, whenever Victor it's, feeds it's it, it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been a handful of days now, and, and no no signs of disturbance or anything like that, or you know anything out of the ordinary. No, other than like some stuff that's been knocked off the table, like papers and stuff. But it's most likely the the cat is the culprit of that. Okay. Um. Is it a only a one story or is it like a two story like a townhouse kind of thing or no it's just it's just, it's just a single story it's a single story okay <sighs> all right well this was a dead end um and Alistair, you you can't speak to this this cat right they're not they're not like you no this one unfortunately has not awakened in the uh living well the the waking world. Well, we're not going to wait around for that to happen. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we're we're heading over to the hospital right now. Um, Victor, hurry up and feed the cat. We need to leave. Oh yeah, no, I I already fed the cat. You already fed her. Although um, now that I think about it, it is possible that uh, it has awakened and is simply not living within the waiting. dreamlands currently. And I'm leaving. <laughs> um, the cat, uh, like you understand, cat. 
and and uh, she's she's thanking you uh, for the food, and and she's still scared, and she's she's lonely, and and she misses her her Gerbo. Alistair understands, or I understand. Well, Alistair. Okay. Well, uh, we will do what we can to try and return Gerbo to you, but uh, in the meanwhile, try to take a nice nap. It is well, so she much just better on the other and, side. and keeps eating. Cool. We're leaving. I, I make Let's sure go. to leave enough food, you know, in case we can't come back. So, okay. I'm trying to get everybody on track because the more we <laughs> waste time, the more the lead goes cold. <laughs> All right, everybody heads out now. Yep. And you're heading to the hospital. Mm-hmm. All right. So no, nothing, nothing eventful. Just your normal everyday traffic in in the town. Um, the the Rose Throne Borough is definitely it smells better than. The the lower Morboro, uh, definitely uh, better taken care of uh, streets and, and, and buildings and better maintenance. A fancier dressed people as well. Uh, but you get to the hospital and people aren't around it. Like everybody knows it's closed, so nobody's really going up there that often. It's it's a little bit uh, separated. It's got a it's got a big area for uh, cars to drive up and. And everything, maybe a little like a mini parking area. I wouldn't say it's a parking lot or anything, but yeah, uh, ba- abandoned hospital. Cool. It looks like it's been abandoned for a handful of months now. Uh, just the what's the main entrance look like? Is it just look like it's been barred up or anything? Or um, no the the main en- it's a it's a big double door and uh. Just it looks it looks empty, untouched. Um, other than like eh, not not untouched, but uh it, it hasn't been disturbed much. Aged by time. Yeah, and um, neglect. Not, not a whole lot. I mean it's only been a handful of months, but oh, okay. but uh there definitely hasn't been any maintenance done to it where like the rest of the Rose Throne Borough is like very well taken nice, care yeah. of. Nobody's been bothering to come up here and make sure the hospital's okay. Okay. Uh, I'm right. I'm just gonna we're gonna go into the hospital, so just we're walk right, go right oh, through. It is, yep, it is a two-story hospital, mm-hmm. um, and it is uh, it's it's not a huge hospital, but it is it is a a rather big building, like like a family practice kind of place. Yeah, we don't notice any bones coming out of the walls, right? <clears throat> it's like a it's like a small hospital, like uh, not a not a tiny place, but but uh. They have the the means to treat all sorts of things. Yeah, there. cool. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm going in. Yeah, definitely. All right, in the front door. Mm-hmm. All right. So all, th- Alistair. Yes, I suppose I should. All be. three of you walk inside. It is very dark. The door closes behind you, and uh, but but as as you open it, you do get a a very stale, um, kind of kind of a rancid kind of smell. Uh, hits you as as you open the door and and walk in and and as the door closes behind you, everything just goes eerily silent. Other than like uh, you hear uh, some some dripping off in the distance and um almost like a uh, a, a decaying smell inside of the hospital. Is uh, is Victor able to to? narrow down what it might be he's got that nose that can smell like flesh and stuff can he can he define what exactly it might be it smells like decaying flesh decaying flesh okay yeah just just uh just rotten organs like fleshy dead dead smell um and it's just it's just filling your filling your nostrils now, and it's actually filling all of your nostrils now. Not mine. Um, and that's that's all you smell. All right. Uh, well, I I I probably I probably could tell what it is, but it's not affecting me because, like I said, the mask is on. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'll probably just kind of look at everyone's pained expressions and kind of like there's something up. Um, yeah, I'm also gonna yeah. put the the night goggles on as well. All right, and then what's the what's the floor plan when we lock it? It's just there's a, you know, like a 
big lobby, small lobby kind of thing, and then the hallways. Yeah, there's there's a there's a small lobby and and behind like well there's a yeah a small lobby there's a desk and then behind the desk there's there's a hallway uh, that goes down and you can see uh, doors going off to the side just just down the hallway just just rooms on on each side um, there's also uh, a door next to you and you can see through the window um, on it and you see stairs that go up okay. Um, you see off in the distance in the hallway, you do see some of the lights, uh, kind of flickering on and off, uh, not, not in any kind of rhythm or anything, but just randomly. Well, Victor, Victor wants to find what's making that smell. Uh, cause Victor's very concerned that it might be Gerbo. Um, but seeing as how we're not quite sure of the environment, um, I'm well, gonna roll just by some. just by the smell, you would know that it's older than five days. Oh, I would. Okay, good. Didn't scratch that. Thank goodness. It's, um, oh, then I'll let them know that it's like, uh, guys, this this smell, this this body's been dead for longer than Gerbo's been missing. So I don't think it's him. We don't know if it's a body yet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to take um, a piece of tape. I'm going to tape it to the wall and I'm going to use infuse item to the wall to um, light up the tape with basically, I'm going to tape it as like an X and it's basically mm-hmm. going to illuminate it as a red X to know that this is where we got through. Just knowing the situations we've been in before and things not going the way we've known them to be, I'm putting this kind of as an anchor to hopefully mitigate some issues. Okay, makes sense. And then so, so like if you if you're you walk out of a room, you see the direction that is the entrance or whatever. Oh, yeah, well, there there was the the house. It was changing. Well, yeah. that that yeah. and also since it's magically infused, I could cast detect magic, and that would ping, so I would know exactly where the entrance would be. Oh, fancy. Okay. I did a little bit All of right. thinking about this. So well, we had three days. We did. Four, really. I, I, I pondered that situation we were in for a second, and I was just like, well, if I create an anchor point that I could find anywhere and not have to be looking at it, that's not bad. So okay. um, I think we should definitely see if we can um, investigate where this smell is coming from. I, I will say that that is a very uh, creative way to use uh, detect magic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is that is until the entire place is steeped in magic. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it it works in theory. Yes. It works in theory. So far. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing I'm worried about. It it's clever in theory. There we go. All the lines uh, all the walls were actually painted with lead paint. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> well, um, uh, Victor probably would have the best ability to track down this smell. And so I think, um, think I'm gonna, you know, it's like, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm I want to figure out where this smell's coming from. Um, did you want to come right with me, or you want me to go ahead? Uh, we're not getting separated, not like last time. Sounds good. And I will say the the that stairwell, um, through through a door like it's closed off. Um, it is to your right as you entered. Um, just so, like, you know where you are and, and what, what you're seeing, what direction and everything. Um, but you do smell, uh, the smell, uh, is coming from the, you're getting the scent from down the, the hallway in front of you. All right. Well, let's head down that hallway. All right. I'm going to follow Victor. I'm assuming so, Richard's following. Yes. <laughs> I, I have no plans on getting separated this time. And hopefully you do not deign to shut a uh, basement door. <laughs> I hope not either. So you're you're heading down the hallway and uh, as you get past the desk and you're you're in the hallway, you start seeing like smears along the walls and, and the floors. You see some uh some some black 
handprints and, and footprints and, and streaks along the, the floors and walls. Footprints on the like the floors and walls and ceiling as well? Or just the Well you're look you're looking at the at the ceiling mm-hmm. as well. Uh you, you notice that there's uh uh like some some cat paws and and like claw marks in in the ceiling. Or like claw holes. Mm. Little little tiny, little tiny. Mm. Um Some friend of yours might be here, Alistair. I have words with them. Yeah, I do too. I'll let you guys so, do the talking this time. <laughs> oh, there's not going to be a whole lot of talking. So the the first few rooms um, that you look into, you open the doors and, and uh, the, the lights are flickering inside the rooms and it looks like uh, some, you got some, you got some beds. It looks like some, some patient rooms and uh, it's just, it's just eerily empty. Um, there's not anything going on. There's not, you don't even see the, like the, the dark streaks and, and handprints and, and everything inside these rooms. Like they've been, they were closed and, um, it's just very off-putting on, on how these rooms are normal, but empty. And then it doesn't match with what's going on in the hallway. Is the dripping getting louder as we're moving forward? Yeah. Is it like a steady drip, or is it kind of bloop, 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 off kilter? Um, it's kind of random. Sometimes you'll hear like like uh, like a do 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 do, and, and like you'll hear a big drip every now and so then. So not a leaky faucet. No. Okay. Do you guys think we should be stealthy as we approach what might be there? I'm going to um, look at Victor as he says this, and then I'm going to pilk, pick out the lightning gun and say, this was not made for stealth. <laughs> and I'm going to use it. I'm going full Ghostbuster mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to shoot a poor maid cart. <laughs> so, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nice shooting, Tex. <laughs> So uh, after after the first few rooms, you don't find anything, and then you you approach a you're you're approaching another room, and the door is not even there is no door; it's just a, a doorway. You look inside, and it's full of hospital gurneys. You, you just see a, a bunch of them in there, and it looks like a uh, they're covered in in like a black substance. Uh, uh, dried blood and and some of it's still wet. Are you are you gonna walk in? Hmm. Walk in. I think I'm gonna go into stealth mode, just because I'm I'm scared. So I just rolled a twenty six. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> okay. Christ! I, <laughs> yeah. 18 okay. So when plus it, or is, all right. So Victor walks in and you feel, um. Underneath, un- underneath your your hooves, you you feel a uh, like uh, the ground is kind of slippery, but but you walking very care- carefully, uh, you you don't slip and fall, but uh, the floor has a uh, very uh, thick uh, congealed substance on it, maybe yeah. like a like an inch thick. Can I tell what it is? No, it's blood. Oh, there's an inch of blood in the and, floor. And 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 bodily fluids and everything. All right. Do I, do I notice anyone, any live person in this room at all? Anything to indicate that we're, that I'm not alone? Uh, give me a perception check. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm kind of watching, watching Victor through the window of the door as he's kind of going through. Oh, there, there's no, there's no door. It's just an open doorway. Or doorway, sorry. So you're just mm-hmm. looking through the doorway. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do notice that there's a, uh, there's a, there's a body bag on one of the gurneys, um, in the in the middle of the room. Mm-hmm. And it looks like it, it, it's not empty. It's not empty. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna go carefully check out that body bag. 
how, very how, carefully. How far in the room is it? Uh, it's not it's not a extremely large room, um, but it's uh, maybe uh, fifteen feet in in to the middle of the room. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna go check. No, out maybe the body maybe bag. twenty. See if there's anyone in it. All right, so you get to the body bag and and un- unzip it. Just a wave of more just rot and decay hits you in the face as you're as you're looking at a, a completely just just rotted corpse to the point that its flesh is like dripping off of the the skull. Hey everybody, it's your DM, Adam. So yeah, here we go, episode 30, it's the first part of A Monster's Confession. So yeah, man, Gerbo's gone missing, they suspect that he's in this creepy ass hospital. Man, oh, it is a creepy hospital. Hope you enjoyed the, the little break in between the arcs and uh yeah, cause shit's about to get real if you're enjoying microphones and monsters make sure you go and, and leave us a review let us know what you think about it tell us your, your favorite moment so far all of our links to everything can be found at microphonesandmonsters.com and all songs are written and produced by Marco Mazzi at Fallen Highway Studios. Hope everybody out there is staying safe, staying healthy, and hope you join us next time here on Microphones and Monsters. <laughs>